Hi everyone, my name is Lei Jiang. Today my presentation is about credit card fraud detection by machine learning. Uh, first, I want to define the problem. So why do we care about detect credit card fraud? Uh, here's some data I got online. Last year, uh, from multiple banks, they suffered a combined of $12.5 billion in losses from delinquent credit card loans. Uh, that is around about 2 billion more than in 2016. So this is showing a 19% increase from year 2016 to 2017. Uh, so we can see the credit card fraud is getting worse and worse. Uh, because it's such a serious problem, we would like to identify the potential fraud transaction um, to reduce the credit card company loss. So, um, because the credit card fraud detection is a typical example of classification, we model the past credit card transactions with the knowledge of the ones uh, that turned out to be fraud, and then use the, the model to identify whether a transaction is a fraud or not. We also need to select an appropriate algorithm to approach. We use the um, machine learning because it can further differentiate good and bad behaviors. Uh, and it also builds predictive models. The procedure is like this. From the raw data, we need to validate and impute credit card transaction records. And then we perform exploratory data analysis to extract useful feature and detect clients of high risks. Then we build classification models to predict the fraud transactions. Uh, the models uh, we, we used in this project uh, is logistic regression, random forest, light GBM, and uh, XBoost. Uh, last but not least, we also tool the hyperparameters to optimize model performance. performance sorry. Uh, so here is the raw data with the dimension of more than 284,000 rows and 31 columns. It's a uh, desensitized uh, historical data, uh, which means the data were transformed to protect the customer's privacy. We checked the data distribution and find there's now uh, there's zero missing data, but the data is highly unbalanced with only um, uh, 0.172% for the class one, which means the, the fraud data. The, school, uh, the schoolness of the data is due to the a very low number of fraud transactions. Uh, we would like to see when those fraud transactions happen. So we plot the credit card transaction time. Uh, the time is also a uh, desensitized data. So it does not indicate the actual time of the transaction. So there is little or no significance in classifying a uh, fraud transaction. Uh, however, uh, when we analyze the fraud amount uh, versus time, we find uh, the, the fraud tended to be in smaller amounts, uh, approximate, approximately uh, between $100 and $200. We check the, the feature correlation with the heat map. We can see that, uh, that most features correlations are very low, uh, with only a few exceptions. Uh, for example, the 
amount uh, with the feature V7 and the amount versus feature V20 has uh, about uh, point, point 0.8 correlation. To further explore the correlation between features, we plotted the regressions between features. As I mentioned in the last slide, the amount uh, versus uh, feature V7 and the amount versus feature V20, they are highly correlated. So we um, plotted with this uh, regression in positive and negative samples. Future, de future density plot is also a very important uh, tool for us to see which features are useful uh, in machine learning. The, those blue lines show the distribution of positive samples and the yellow lines show the negative samples. As we can see in this graph, the feature V4 and the feature V11 are pretty good because they have big difference in distribution uh, for the positive and negative samples. Also in this graph, uh, we can see that feature V20 and V21 are pretty bad in, um, because uh, the, the two uh, positive and negative sample data are not separated very well. Uh, in this case, we can use some transformation or we can project uh, the data to higher dimension in order to be able to differentiate them. So after the exploratory data analysis, we start to build classification models. Here are some of the parameters we used in the model. And uh, the first model we deployed is the logistic regression. Here's the results. On the left are the AUC scores. Uh, AUC score means uh, under an uh, area under the curve. It's a very common evaluation metric for classification problems. Uh, in this case, we have very unbalanced data. So we uh, use AUC to evaluate the performance of our models uh, is appropriate. On the right, uh, we see the feature importance data. Uh, we, we want to know the feature importance because we want to be able to uh, select the features and, uh, and perform dimensionality reduction later. Uh, the next model we use is uh, random forest. Uh, it has a, a relatively higher AUC score than the uh, logistic regression model. And on the right is also the feature importance results uh, given by this model. Uh, AUC is not the only uh, measurement we can use for accuracy. Here we showed a confusion matrix uh, with it shows uh, on the upper right is the false positive. As you can see, there's only one false positive. Uh, so uh, this uh, model uh, performance is pretty good. The next model is light GBM. Uh, here's the other results. Um, similarly, we also have the XG boost, uh, it yields the highest AUC score and the, the, uh, the performance is pretty good. It's quite fast. It's faster than the last one uh, because it requires less computing power. So uh, th I think this one uh, has the best performance among all those models. So in conclusion, uh, with all the information above, we can compare the performance of the classification models. 
The bar chart on the right shows the model with the highest AUC score is XG Boost, uh, which is 98.6% accuracy. And the second highest one is Light GBM, which has 98.5% uh, uh, accuracy. Uh, we also get the rank of the most important features. From this rank, uh, we uh, pick the top five most important feature and uh, generate this graph to show the normalized feature importance between the models. As you can see on this graph, uh, some of the top ranked features uh, are are highly correlated, so it may not be a good idea to include those features in one model. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, those features show uh, the V14, V10, V4, V12, and amount. They showed the, a very strong correlation between the features and the target. So therefore, uh, those are the most uh, important features we pick for this project. So, uh, and with this, uh, I would like to take any questions or comments. Thank you.